Okay, so this is another uh, introduction to our stoner package, and in this video I'm going to concentrate on talking about using the uh, set as attribute that belongs in our main data objects. Um, and this is used to go and uh, describe what a particular column is in your data file is going to be used for. Um, so we've got a uh, Qt console open, we've um, done the PyLab magic, we've changed to a directory with some sample data, and I've imported um, the data object from the Stoner package. So the first thing I'm going to do is just load in a data file. Um, so that again is just a question of creating a data object with um, passing in a file name is the, into the constructor there. So there we go. This particular file is from a quantum design squid VSM system we have. Um, so if we actually just have a look at it, it's got a lot of numbers. Um, if I scroll up to the top of the screen there, um, then you'll see it's um, representing this in our standard data format. So we have a column of, of various bits of metadata, and then we have a sequence of different columns, um, and there are an awful lot of columns in this data file, and it can't show um, all of them on the screen, and so it tries to put in some breaks. It, it, it tries to make an effort to work out what might be interesting columns. Um, and in this particular file format, um, we try and work out what um, sensible X and Y data columns might be based on what the, it said the measurement you were doing were was. So in this case, it's picked a timestamp as the X and a magnetic moment as the Y. Now, in this particular file, I happen to know that um, it in fact is a magnetic hysteresis slope. Um, and if we look at the column headers um, for this, then okay, again, you see that um, the quantum design file format has an awful lot of column headers, most of which don't contain anything useful. Um, but the interesting one thing, the interesting things here are going to be the magnetic field um, and the moment, and then the standard error in the moment. So this is going to represent a, a x data in the horizontal axis for the magnetic field, the moment in the y axis, and then an error in the y axis. And so we can go and tell it that this is what these columns mean by um, simply using the set as attribute. Um, and so I can use it by um, essentially doing a call on the set as attribute. So I do set as brackets x equals field y equals moment and now I want to also go and tell it that we have an error in the y um, and this is given the letter e for error and I can tell it it's whoop, standard error like so. So um, as we covered previously when I'm identifying a column I don't need to give it a full the full column header, just as long as it can pick out enough to determine a unique column, um, or alternatively, I could give it the um, the index number of that column. So counting from zero, zero, one, two, three, four, and five, um, and so that would uh, do the same thing. So we can do that, and if I now ask it what our um, column assignments are, then you can see it's picked up an X, a Y, and an E. And just like before, we can check that that looks reasonable. Um, I can give it, ask it for some red dots. Um, and because I've given it a, um, an error column, it's going to give me some error bars. Um, and it's always good to set the cap size on the error bars. Um, so I do that, and we get a plot. Um, and that is indeed a hysteresis loop. And if we zoom in and zoom in, the error bars are rather small, but they are there. OK, so we've assigned a X, a Y, and a Y error in our data like that. OK, so um, what we can then go and do with this is we can um, actually go back and replot that again. Um, you can see immediately one of the issues here is that um, our magnetic moments here are all in micro EMU um, and we might actually rather wanting this at 10 to the minus 6 we might say want to actually to plot that actually in micro EMU. So in other words what we need to go and do is multiply all the y data by a factor of a million along with the errors and we have a convenient shorthand for doing that I can just do d dot y 
mark that is all of my Y data. Um, as we said previously, it's a masked array, which is why we have all those forces there, because we're um, showing all the data. So you see, they're all 10 to the minus 6. And you just dy equals d dot y times 1 e to the 6. And now when I look at it, you see those have gone from being 10 to the minus 6 to being um, now numbers which are closer to 1. Of course, we need to do the same thing with the error column as well. So we can do something with that, d dot e. Um, and you can all use, always use the in place operators. So you can just do times equals 1e to the 6. And that does the same thing. And now I can replot that data again. And you see it's now come up and it's showing you those numbers um, are now uh, in micro EMU, although the label is still wrong. But that's a problem we can fix later. OK, so that is simply just um, assigning um, uh, values back into these, these attributes, using the set as attributes to, to access a particular column in the data and then manipulate it and then replace those, those columns with new values which we've calculated. So it makes it a very quick and easy way of just updating one particular column, of applying a formula to a whole column of data. Um, well, what else can we do? Um, we can find out a little bit about um, our set as attributes. So I can say, tell me what the set as value is for the first column in the file. So I'm just going to index set as as though it's like a list. And they come back and tell me that's a dot, meaning it's unassigned. If I say, tell me what column three is, then it tells me it's x. And of course, because we always allow ourselves to index columns by name, I can say, tell me what the column, which is called field, it's the same thing, it's the x. Um, and if I want to find out what all the columns are, I can do a handy to dict Oops, method. And now it returns a little dictionary, which says the x column and then the magnetic field is, and then y column and the header for that, and the e column and the header for that. Now, if I actually want to find out what the number of a particular column is, so what the, the numerical index is, then I can look at, for example, for the x column, I can look at the x col attribute, and that comes back and tells me it's column 3, and the y column, and it comes back and tells me it's 4. Now, you notice that, in fact, it's returning as a list here, and that's because we allow um, ourselves to have multiple y, multiple e, um, columns. Um, generally speaking, we assume there's only one x column in a data file. Um, you can set more than one column to be an x, but the, uh, most of the functions will assume that the, the first x it comes to is the one we're interested in. Um, and if we want to see all of the possible um, columns, we can look at um, d.setas.cols and uh, here we get then again a little dictionary that shows us all the potential columns. So it says we've got an x col, we haven't got an x error column, we've got a y column, we've got a y error, and then you see we've got these z, u, v, and w. Um, and um, the way our coordinate system is designed to work is obviously x, y, and z are coordinate are Cartesian coordinates of a particular point in space, and u, v, and w are direction vectors or direction components of a of a vector. So with x, y, z and u, v and w we can define a vector field over three dimensions. And you see we also record certain other things like we've only got two axes in this plot um, and whether we have x and y and z columns and u, v, w columns defined. And this is all information it uses to work out what the appropriate type of plot is. So you'll see that in this case we were plotting with an x, a y and an e and it was automatically giving us an error bar plot. If I didn't have an E data, it would just give us an XY scatter plot. And we'll show you an example just in a second of what happens when you've got more um, axes defined in the data file. OK, so um, uh, the other thing we can go and do is we can say, well, um, can we have a look at which columns we've actually set anything on and which ones we haven't? So I can do d.setas.set, and that gives me an array of booleans which is true when a particular column is assigned to a 
something to an X or a Y or a Z or an E or something like that, and otherwise false. And of course we get the converse of that, which is not set. Okay, and why is that useful? Well, that allows you to do a very handy little shortcut, which allows us to do something like this. Delete column, d.setas.not set. And what that's gone and done, and you see it's shoved out a copy of the data file, is removed all of the columns apart from the the three columns we're interested in. So this is really handy if you have, like quantum design tend to do, a file with um, many, many, many more columns you're ever going to need to go and work with, and you just want to go and work with the columns that are actually got interesting data in them. You simply just define the ones you're interested in using the set as attribute, and then delete all the ones that are not set, and that'll clear them all out. Okay, so that's a uh, a quick and handy little introduction to some basic stuff with the, the X, setting X and Y in an error bar. And of course these column assignments, they, the idea of this is that they're then picked up by other um, functions in the library. So anytime it wants to work out what your X column is or what your Y column is, it can go and check and see if you've already told it this column is X, this column is Y, this column is an error. Okay, so let's have a look now at uh, what happens with a um, a file where we've actually got some vector field information defined. So now I'm going to open a new file. Um, so uh, .ovf files come out of Micromagnetic software. Um, so in Micromagnetics we are uh, calculating the uh, direction and magnitude of a magnetic moment um, over a three-dimensional volume, uh, having initialized it with some various conditions and uh, described the interactions between the in, within the system. Okay, so this is quite a chunky file. Um, if we look at its shape, then you'll see in fact it's about 409,000 lines long. Um, so we probably don't want to go around and print it all out. And uh, the other thing with this file, you see it's got six columns and as part of the file format, it automatically knows that you're loading in X, Y, Z and UVW data. So in other words, it's describing this vector field of magnetization over a three-dimensional space. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go and um, select just part of the file based on the coordinate system I've defined. So I'm going to go e dot is equal to d dot section and then I'm going to say let's have the points where the z coordinate is 10.5 and the x coordinate is between 30 and 50 and the y coordinate is also between 30 and 50. Okay so if I now have a look at the shape of E then you'll see it's only 400 points by six columns. Okay at this point it's worth having a look at it. So we have a bunch of data um, so there's some metadata and then you see we've got X, Y, Z and U, V, W columns and they're also assigned. So in the header here it's giving you the index of the column number and also uh, what we've assigned to it. Okay, so of course I could just go off and plot this um, like so. And now the library has produced a slightly messy looking plot. So what it's done is it's worked out that I have three-dimensional data and a vector field. And so what it's doing is a plot that um, if I just expand it up to its full size and we can move it around a bit, um, you see it's a, a load of arrows that are color coded and they're pointing in different directions that are describing the vector field. Um, it's not the prettiest plot to look at. Um, and it's not helped by the fact that in fact there's only one um, layer of uh, magnetic moments here. There's the just a one plane um, of, of Z coordinates. Um, so in some ways the Z coordinate is a bit useless in this plot because it's all the same. So let's go and get rid of that Z coordinate. Let's just ignore it. So we can do that by doing e dot set as dot unset. And now I can say ignore the Z. And into unset I can put either 
a column assignment x y z u v w d e f where d is the error in x and e is the error in y and f is the error in z and it'll work it out or i can give it a number meaning the um, index of the column um, or i can give it a column header um, whenever i give it it'll try and do the right thing so if i now look at my set as you see it's uh, x y dot UVW. So this is defining a three-dimensional vector field on a two-dimensional grid. So if I ask it to plot that, the library will now work out that I've given it five axes of information and it chooses an appropriate way of displaying that information. Um, so what we've got here, um, the background colour is a colour wheel that describes the direction. Um, so in this case, uh, sort of green is basically to the left and purple is more or less to the right. Um, reddy, red colours tend to be down and uh, blue colours tend to be up um, uh, or up, up the screen. And then black and white are in and out of the plane. Um, and so you get a quick idea of the things we're pointing and then we just overlay it with some arrows to help show it as well. OK, so that's all very well. Um, one of the things I might be interested in is knowing is actually what are the um, the angles of the vector field um, within this, this set of data. And again, we provide some little shortcuts to help us do that. So as soon as we've defined enough coordinates, enough axes in our set as attribute um, to let us work out things like um, cylindrical or spherical polar coordinates, we make them available. So in this case, we have a e.q um, uh, attribute, so a dot .q um, for theta, and that then becomes the angle um, between the u and the v uh, components. So it's taking the essentially the arctangent um, of the u and the v components of our vector field and converting it to an angle. And then we have an e dot uh, p, which is uh, short for phi, um, and that gives us uh, <coughs> a coordinate that's of the um, angle coming out of the plane. And then finally, we have e dot r, which is the magnitude of the u, v, and uh, w coordinate system. Um, and then that, you see, is very close to 1. Um, this is because we're simulating a, um, individual magnetic moments. And so the moments don't change size. They just change different directions. Um, if we don't define uh, a u, v, w coordinate system, then it will make use of x, y, and z coordinates if it can. So in that case, if you just have x, y, and z defined, then um, the dot r will give you the magnitude of the x, y, z coordinates. The q and the p will give you the two angles. And if you don't define a z, then you have a q and an r, but you don't have a p, because um, there's no phi angle if you only defined a 2D vector field. Anyway, back to our set of data. Um, so in this case, we had a 3D vector field, but if we're actually just interested in the, um, the, the, the as, as a 2D vector, then what we wanted to go and do is remove the W component. So in other words, we want to unassign the W component. So we could do that like we did with the Z. We could just do um, e.setas.unset W, and that would work. However, we also provide a another shortcut. We can use the subtraction operator. So if I do e dot set as minus quotes w, then that's the same as unsetting the uh, w. Um, in this case, what it's giving me is a, another set as attribute, so a copy um, of what I had. So the original is still set as it was, but it gave us a another copy of it, but with the w column unset. So in fact, all I have to do is minus equals. So to use the in place operator, and now I've unset the W column. So when I do a plot of this, then um, we no longer have the black and the white. We just have the the color wheel that we had. So it's using the same uh, color coding. So um, We've got a sort of a purple goes to the right and a green goes to the left and red goes down and blue goes more or less, whitish blue is going more or less up. Um, but the black and the white is no longer in there because we're only looking at the uh, 2D vector field. Okay, um, 
The other thing we might want to go and do is say, well, are two different set as equal to each other? Um, so I can test for equality. Um, let's start off just by creating a um, copy of the set as for this uh, E object. So E is just a part of the, the big 3D uh, six dimensional data set we had to start with. So if I use set as dot clone, I just make an exact copy of it. So there we go. So now I can say, well, is set as the same thing as E dot set as? And it says, yes, it is. But I can also say, is E set as the same as x, y, dot, u, dot, v, whoops, comma that, so in other words, is it equal to that list of column assignments? I need to test for equality, which I'm about to not do. There we go. Yes, it is. So it checks to see if you just give it a list whether it's the same thing. And we can also do that by testing it with a string. xy dot uv dot. Whoops. And I've just assigned it to that string. Um, instantly assigning to a string um, still does the same thing. It just reads the columns off um, off the string. So that actually did the same. I have actually changed my set as by doing that. But let's actually ask it whether these things are the same. And yes, they are. Um, and in fact, if you have unassigned columns at the end, then it'll just ignore those when checking the to see if they're the same. So um, I can also say that is E set as the same as x, y, dot, u, v. So even though I'm only checking the first five columns, it will still say yes, they are the same because the last column um, in the set as attribute was unassigned to any meaning and I've not given it any meaning when I'm testing the equality in the string. So um, that just works. And if I have dot, dot, dot w so this is a slightly pointless um, set of column assignments um, but I can also check is that equal to three dots uvw and yes it is so it'll work out and expand the, um, the, the the syntax where you give it a number first and then a, a thing it should repeat that many times over so all of those are different ways of um, getting at the, the same columns of information. And the idea with all of these things is that um, it should make it, should always try and guess what it is you are trying to intend to go and do and do something that is vaguely sensible. Um, and then finally, just to point out that um, when you give it um, uh, uh, not enough space to show all the columns, then it'll, it'll start abbreviating them as best it can. So in this data file, I have um, six columns, um, and it's got space for six columns. It'll always just show them all. But if we go back to the um, the uh, Squid VSM file. And I can set it as uh, three dots x y e. So that was what we used in order to get the right columns. If I now ask it to go and show me what it's got, then what it comes back with, and it skips over any columns that before the one I'm first interested in, shows me the ones I'm interested in, and then if it needs to, it goes and skips more. So in this case, it's just showing me columns three, four, five, and then six and the very very last one and of course as I said the problem with the uh, quantum design files is a lot of the columns contain just not a numbers because they're they've got no particular meaning for that particular measurement okay so just in summary um, we've just been messing around with the set as attribute um, which we're using to set up columns 
we can set columns, assign them to be x, y, z, and the uncertainties in those values, and uh, u, v, and w, which lets us define vector fields. Um, we can um, then get at those columns directly with a, an attribute, so d dot x, d dot y. You can um, write to those attributes. You can set d dot x equal to some num set of numbers, and it'll go and replace the data um, in the in the file very quickly and easily. So you can do quick column formulas involving different um, different columns that you've assigned. Um, you can ask it questions about which columns you've assigned. You can get them as a dictionary. You can treat it like a list. You can um, uh, get, extract the column indexes out of it with the coles attribute. Um, and you can also use set and not set to get it as a an array of uh, booleans for whether columns are assigned or not, and then that can be quite useful for reducing your data. Okay, so um, that's probably a fairly good introduction then to um, this rather important concept of an attribute, um, and we'll be using this attribute an awful lot in um, future examples whenever we need to go and assign a column um, of data to be to represent some set of values.